skater. Yeah. My nana, she used to do the sewing and the stitching and the, the needleworks. It was a family tradition to, to create the heirlooms to pass down from generation to generation. Yeah. The uh, fabric arts of Thompson. I, I, I don't know. I was just out there fishing. You know. But uh, it's a beautiful stuff. It is. It is. And uh, it, it's good to see the youngins picking up the new arts too. Well, the old arts, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, eh, you know, she's not the greatest, but eh, she patient. Let's get organized to start from where we left off. Okay. Now, um, just a refresher. This is our cross stitch dimensions. Okay. We put this on Q snap last video. I'm going to tighten it a little. It's a little loose now. So I just give her a little pull. Okay. And one thing that I do need to do real quick too, is um, wash my hands. Always wash your hands before you start and get the oils off your hands so that you don't end up getting it all grungy. Now, see, see what I mean? This is a little short on these ends. I probably should have gone a little shorter, but I didn't. So we're just going to do our best here to pull this tight. Let's see here. Okay. It's better. A little tighter. Sorry. Off camera there. Yeah. Ideally, I should have made my frame just a little bit, a little bit smaller to have a little more <clears throat> excess for tightening. Otherwise, I'm going to start pulling my last row out. But good enough for now. Alright, that's gonna bug me. That little lump. I gotta fix it. Let's see here. Get that hold. There we go. There. Okay. <clears throat> and I just did a big old knot to keep everything from getting all messed up while it was laying set aside. Let's just pull that out, straighten those out. We'll put them over on this side for now. Come on. Yeah, it wants to slide off. We'll go this way with it. That way. Not ideal, but hey, I'm a newbie. Okay, and I've got this color. I'm not really set up very well because, you know, I just winging it. Okay. Alrighty. And then here was my blown up version of my quadrant. And this was marking the centers one space over, and I had put my needle very close to where center should be. So, the first color I'm going to do is this symbol here. Okay. Ooh. Here is my chart 
Where is it? There it is. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. None of those are it. None of those are it. Here it is. There it is. So it's a blended um, floss. One strand of 16187 and one strand of 17169. Okay. All these extra copies. Because it always takes several tries. Alright. And my stool's here, so I'm going to pause you while I get organized a little bit better. Alright. Um, kind of show you how I'm set up. Now, this isn't how I would normally do it if I was sitting on the couch, but we're not on the couch. So I've got my pattern with my start point and some magnets to hold it onto my metal board. I've got my highlighters and my scissors and then of course my floss. Now these would normally be hanging over like the back of the couch cushions or something but we're not there. And then I've got my um, my scrap bin, my needle threader, my needles, my pin cushion. And this is hanging over the edge of my table. All right. And. All right. I am on the hunt now for 16187. It's this beautiful teal. So I need one strand of that. All right. Grab my teeny tiny scissors. And hopefully you can see me do this. I kind of spin it because, you know, it's kind of wound. If you spin it so that they separate and then just get your scissors in there, get one little tiny strand and snip it. And then grab it, holding the rest, and just pull it out. Now I'm going to set these aside because I don't need this for a little while. And then my other color, 17169, right here. So one of those. Now, normally when I sew, as I said in the first video, I would just put one thread through my needle halfway and essentially fold it over the needle so that it doesn't fall off. But when you're using two strands, you can't do that. You just line them up with each other. And I use this type of needle threader. It's the kind I prefer. And then this needle is actually sharp. I don't want that one. I don't want a sharp needle. Let's see. Let me see what I've got. I should have just used the one that came with it, but I don't know. Oh, it's in here. <laughs> I was like, I don't know where it is. It's right, it's right there. That's the one that came with it. So we'll use the one that came with it. So I'm going to remark this with a different pin needle. There we go. So let's see, it doesn't have a sharp end. When you have one with a sharp end, you can accidentally more easily um, pierce through a thread rather than going in the holes. 
If you have trouble picking this up, use a magnet. I have these needle cases that have a magnet on the back. Yes, there you go. Okay. Put that through there. And I do, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. I tend to do less because you're going to get um, wear on the floss, wear your needle from friction. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, so I don't like to have that much waste. But then it tends to fall off more easily. But anyway... You want to hang on to that so it doesn't come off, and you just slip it through. All right. Now, a lot of times I will take my rings off when I'm doing this because it gets stuck, but I can't get them off anymore. They don't come off. All right. I know there's some new... Well, not new. There's a different way of... That's interesting. I cut them at the same length, but they're way different at this end. So apparently one of my skeins is different than the other. So I am going to trim the tail end so that they're the same. My scissors aren't sharp. Okay. <clears throat> Forgot what I was saying. Okay. Oh, there's a new way of doing this, but I haven't tried it yet as far as starting a thread. Um, but I don't know if it works on linen. I think it only works on Ada, but we're going to start. Okay, let me slide this down so you can see what we're doing here. So this one that fell off the chart is our exact center, and we're going over one. Um we're going to do three. Now, <clears throat> what I was talking about in my first video is I do full coverage on the back where they were talking about, and by talking, I mean a diagram. They go A to B to C to D to E to F, which leaves these little tiny stitches on the back. And I was explaining that I don't like to do it that way because then it's really hard to, to start and end your threads. Trying to get under those little tiny nibs. So I always did it the other way where I would go from B to A to D to C to F to E. Now, the other thing is, is whichever direction you're going, you want to essentially come up in an empty space and go down into the sewn place. If that makes any sense at all. Probably not. And the reason for that is, again, friction on your floss to reduce um, to reduce the fraying or damage to it. Because it's pretty shiny and the more friction it has, especially going in different direct, well, whatever, it ends up being more fuzzy and less shiny. So I was always taught to, let's see if they show it on here. Let's see here. A, B, C, D, E, F. Hmm, what is that? Oh, that's back. What are they showing here? Yeah, they're not doing it the way I was taught. See, they're going A to B, C to D, E to F. I was always taught to sew into your stitches, not out from them. Because this is the second row. Weird, but that's, they're doing half cross stitch there. Anyway, I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but... <clears throat> so, for example, if I'm going to head this way, I would want to go from here to here, here to here, here to here. 
But then when you get to the end and you come back, my next row, I would be coming up against my stitch and I don't want to do that. So then the next option would be to go up and down because you can either go back and forth or up and down. So if I went up and down, I'd be going A to B, C to D. And then my other row would be going that way. And then I'm in the center. Yeah, that's goofy. But basically all I'm trying to do, forget all that. Forget all that. That's all bullshit. I just want to get up to the top corner. I'm trying to get up there. So I'm just going to go across one row and then I'm going to go up the side of the chart. I'm not going to worry about filling in full. I'm just doing what I have to to get to my top corner. So I'm going to do three stitches across here and then we'll change colors. And we're going to do, let's do parking stitches to go across. Again, parking is you leave your needle on, well I leave my needle on, but you leave it without ending it and cutting it and you just keep it going so that you have all of your needles with, or you have all your threads going for the next one. So we're just going to start. Let's just start. Start already, woman. Okay. So we're going to start with this one and we're going to go from A to B, C to D, E to F. And here's our fabric. Now, I'm doing it on linen, so I'm going to go over two stitches. So let me zoom way the heck in so you can see this really well. Now Jasmine wants to come in. Hang on. Alright. So that's my center. I'm going to pretend that's the center. I just lost it. Let me put this back in here. Hang on. Let me get it in so it doesn't fall out. There we go. Okay, so that's my center. And I'm going to go over two. One, two is always, I'm going over two threads by two. If you remember from here, where am I? I know it's really blurry, but my X's go across two boxes. Okay. So let me just find my beginning. So blurry. Okay. Let's see here. This is a challenge with the camera zoomed in so far. Let's see. All right. I'm getting close. All right. There we go. And we'll go over one more box. So that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to pull it through there. Now, I'm going to show you the back. Because it's my first stitch, I have nothing to run my stitch under to hold it steady. So I'm just going to go till it's yay long. All right. And then I'm just going to hold it with my finger for a second to keep it in place. And then, okay. And then I need to go up two holes. Okay. I know it's kind of crooked now. Straddling the camera here. Hold on. There we go. Let me get you in there so you can see. Okay. And focus. There. Okay. So I went up one, two holes, and over two. This is where I was saying if you had a really sharp needle, you'd end up piercing those tiny threads and going into them instead of hit the hole. So you want a blunt needle. Okay. So I'm going to go down. All right. 
Now I was going to do three stitches in a row. So my next one, I want to skip two holes. Right there. And then from here, I'm going up to. And skip two again. Make sure I didn't pierce anything. There we go. You can see already why this is so much easier with two hands. I'm holding the frame with one hand. And then from this one, up two. Okay, there's my three stitches. Now I'm gonna look and see on my pattern, how far away is my next one? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten away. That's a long ways away. And I don't want to count that because that's 20 threads. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do, this is where I say most people, they'll count and park, but they'll also draw the grid. I've never drawn the grid on my fabric. I don't trust myself to do that. So I'm going to just do this little area so that I have enough back stitching on the back to end my thread. Because we're not going to park. Forget that part. Okay. Now, what I'll do too is I'll flip it over and make sure that my stitches were covering my tail. Because I want that to be secured down. So now, zoom you back in. All right, we're going to go back the other way now. Sorry for all the bumping. That's really kind of grainy, isn't it? Okay, I'm, I can't even figure out where I'm at. I'm way down here. Okay. Zoom out just tad because it's so grainy. There we go. There. Where are you? Okay. Don't pull too hard or you'll pull your tail right out. Okay. And it doesn't want to stay focused. And then up two from there. I got it caught over the corner of my again twice. Come on. Turn it. What did I do? I've got it caught on the corner of my thing down here. Oh my God, it's seasick. Okay. And then I pulled it unevenly. Okay, that was a disaster. It's like a disaster film. There we go. Okay, I can get rid of this now. I know where my center is. So, ah, man, motion sickness big time. Okay, get rid of that. Okay. Oh, and then I pulled my needle right off. So much fun. Okay, I gotta rethread. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll get the hang of this eventually. That's why I want a floor stand. All right. Here's another way of threading your needle. If you don't want to futz with the needle threader, so you just pinch it over, and then. Like that works if you got big eyes on your needles. It doesn't work too well with the uh, tiny eyes that you use for beading. All right, now 
Zoom in again. It really doesn't want to cooperate. There we go. Alright. And... There. Now you don't want to pull them tight. You don't want to be pulling so that you're causing these threads to like pull. You know what I mean? So it's not a lot of tension. All right, and then according to our pattern, now we would do one above it and then one diagonal. Hey, why not, right? Okay, and that's gonna be, put this back here where you can see it, centered above the three. Now, where are you here? Lost you, there they are. Okay, so here's where I'm gonna switch I want to sew into my floss, not through it. So I'm going to start at the top. And what I mean by that is, see, I'm going to go down into my sewn work rather than pulling up through it and causing friction on my finished stitches and my thread. This reduces the friction and keeps your floss shinier. It's getting blurry again. I can't see what I'm doing with this camera, I tell you. I really can't. Because my autofocus circles right where I'm trying to sew. There we go. Alrighty. There. Oh, I missed it. See? See what I did there? Because I couldn't see what I was doing. My thread went in there. It was supposed to go in there. So I need to back that out. Now, this is the dangerous way of backing your stitches out, is by putting your needle through. Because if you pierce anything it's not going to come through see how i did that i just see i pierced something under there the safer way is to actually pull it out um by pulling it from the top your thread and that's the danger i have with the way that i put my needle on by doubling it over, my needle doesn't come off. So I end up jacking myself up a lot. Okay. Now do I have it in the right spot? Right there. Yep. There we go. Much better. All right. And then one up to the diagonal. So for this one, I'm going to go up two, over two. And down into the corner of this one. I hope that's the right spot, I can't really see. Okay. And
and I can double check it by looking that I'm in the same row as that corner. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna back out and show you what I was talking about with the parking stitches that they were talking about. So they would actually count over to where this next one's gonna go and they would count on their fabric to where it's go, gonna go, put it in the right spot and then switch colors to the next one, which would be, you know, like this color. However, when you're going over two, I don't want to count that because it's too easy to screw up because you're going over two threads and they're so tiny. What I prefer to do is just put it over in the general area and mark it somehow. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here. to just the general area, like I said. And then I'm going to just go around to keep it a little tight and park it that way. And then what you could do, you know, as long as you're not holding it all over the place, you could do a few things. If you made yourself some sort of cards that are real small like this, you could, you know, park it along there with the symbol that you're doing, you know, if, I'm just brainstorming right now. So I'm thinking, okay, so you stick a card over here and you just park it on the card of what it is. That should work. Okay, so I need to make some sort of cards like this. And it's like a cardstock, a thick cardstock. So I'm going to do that and we're going to experiment that that's how I'm going to park mine because I don't want to count over and I don't want to end it because there's like hardly anything on the back here to end that on. It's so little stitching to end it. You're going to end it with a little lump there and you don't want lumpy stuff. So that's going to be my next step is I'm going to make symbol cards similar to these. But basically, yeah, that's what you do. And then you go to your next color and you thread your needle and then you'd run it under this and I would still leave a bit of a tail because that's not enough. You like to have a nice long tail so it doesn't pull out. And you'd go to your next color and do a couple stitches over and you're working your way, at least how I do it, I'm working my way to the top left corner. So I'm going to go experiment now with making needle cards and that will be another video. Alright, I hope this was somewhat helpful to anybody who's never cross-stitched. And for those of you who have, I'm sure you all do it differently. We've all learned different ways and you can see I need to fix this because my my weave is not straight so I'm, my tension isn't even so I need to also reframe this in a smaller Q snap so I can get it straight because that's going to cause my whole pattern to kind of do this. You want it straight. So I'm going to fix that too. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this and um, so this was cross stitch 102. We'll see what happens with cross stitch 103 later on. Bye guys. Yeah, daddy's home. Um, I'll try it. I I think I remember my mom using masking tape. I used painter's tape, cover the edge, gave me a little more whatever. And I left the frame the same. We'll try this. If not, I'll reduce it because my next size down is going to make it tiny. I just don't have enough of these Q-snaps to, you know, get the size I really want. But we're going to try that. But my fabric is straighter on there now. So, um, time to take Jazzy to the dog park. So, I'm going to go do that. I was kind of hoping she might make me like a wine cooler koozie or something. I don't know. My, my feet get cold out on the fishing boats. They do, yeah. But, uh, you know, Sven, he, 
he 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 likes to do the needles the needle work too yeah a lot of guys do out on the boats they sure do yeah Pass the time and the motion sick, the seasick, yeah, it helps with that. This is a good practice video for the seasickness. Sure it was. Okay, well, maybe we'll do more. We'll see.